Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, final session of uh, our Positive Impact Week. Uh, I'm Slavomir Krupa, uh, Head of Global Banking and Investor Solutions at Société Générale. And I'm very happy today to be joined by uh, Bruce Flatt, CEO of Brookfield Asset Management, uh, an outstanding uh, firm, a leading investor in the alternative uh, asset management space, uh, and uh, uh, also now uh, one of the leading uh, investors in terms of the transition to uh, net zero. So uh, Bruce, thank you for, for joining us. And uh, we've known each other for, for a while, uh, but maybe uh, everybody knows Brookfield Asset Management, but maybe you could uh, tell us a bit about the, the Brookfield story since you took over. You have been the CEO for over 20 years, and you've uh, changed the firm from uh, uh, an investor of its uh, own money into one of the leading asset uh, management firms uh, in the world. Uh, how did you achieve that? So firstly, Slavomir, thank you uh, for having me. It's always a pleasure to be with you. We had a small investment business 25 years ago, and uh, uh, with the help of uh, you uh, and others, we um, decided to internationalize the business. And to do that, we needed capital. And uh, what we thought we could do is take our investing skills, uh, repackage them, and offer them to uh, institutional investors globally. And that's really the simple story. And, and uh, yes, we raise $100 billion of capital for funds uh, today every year. Um, we put 50, 75 billion to work every year. But the whole theory behind it was um, be great investors in the things we do, stick to what we do, add on things ad in adjunct areas where we can um, not take too much risk. Uh, and earn reasonable returns over very long periods of time for people. And um, 25 years later, the, the story's been pretty good. And I, I think it's, um, it's still a very good environment for alternative firms. The, it's a fascinating story because you just mentioned the returns. And uh, from what I know, uh, the average returns for uh, Brookfield uh, shareholders uh, were over, the, over these years uh, 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 around 20%. Uh, so uh, pretty healthy uh, returns, and uh, I'm sure you know that uh, you've sometimes uh, uh, referenced to as uh, the Canadian uh, Warren Buffett, uh, you know, a uh, somewhat mythical uh, value uh, investor uh, as well. So speaking about value investing, how do you uh, look at uh, the investments in, uh, in ESG uh, in general and energy transition in particular from this perspective of the value investor? How do you reconcile the fact that you have a crowded space uh, and potentially uh, uh, overpriced assets with uh, the expectation for these kind of returns from your investors. How do you think about that? I would break um, uh, responsible investing into two things. Um, there's how you run your business, what you invest into, and how you act. And we've always been believed that sustainability uh, in business was, a, was what was really important. And therefore, in every respect, if you're thinking about the long term, you're trying to run sustainable, be in sustainable businesses. So I'd say that's point number one. The second part um, is that uh, we've been in the renewables business long before it was called renewables. So we had a, a large hydro business. We were in wind, we were in solar, and we've been in it for um, 40, over 40 years. And um, because of that, it had us uh, a real industrial grounding in these businesses. So we continue to grow those businesses globally, and we're one of the largest owners, uh, operators of renewables in the world. But um, what came to us recently is what's really, really important uh, in the transition to net zero is the transition. And it's not about green. It's about helping businesses go from black to brown, brown to olive, olive to dark green, dark green to light green. Our strategy has been provide capital, do things that help the transition. And um, in that, we, uh, we have been able to earn good returns and also do good things. And, and there's nothing more satisfying than doing good things and earning uh, good returns. Uh, so, from your perspective, for both for having uh, had that vision for quite a long time and having thought about this transition and these opportunities for a long time, what would be your advice to, uh, to the corporate clients that, uh, that we have here today? What would be your advice for the CEOs, CFOs? How should they think about this 
uh, from at least from a methodology perspective in terms of their own ESG agenda. Slomir, look, it's a, it's a daunting task. The number one thing is uh, the easiest one to get rid of uh, emissions is get, make, get your electricity from green sources. So um, we're having enormous number of conversations with the, the best global companies that are out there, and we're converting our development pipeline into renewables for them. So um, solar, wind, hydro uh, um, from out there, as opposed to using fossil fuels in the grid, we're doing direct contracts with them. After that, it gets more difficult, but then, but our companies are figuring out how they decarbonize their industrial processes. And, um, and that's what's going on, and that's, that's the second part. But uh, with all these things, you just have to start. And, uh, and, and I think uh, most companies are, are at the point where they're finding ways to uh, accomplish it. And I, you couldn't have said that even two years ago. Mm. And what about the investors? So, so once again, uh, somewhat crowded opportunity. You see some papers now saying uh, it doesn't matter or it's not a relevant uh, uh, framework uh, uh, to think about ESG investing uh, as such. Uh, what do you uh, think uh, about their, their position here? Especially the ones who don't have the kind of access to a to specific project, you know, specific assets that you can have uh, uh, you know, uh, in alternative asset uh, investments. For, for investors that are just buying um, on the market at uh, the latest bid uh, solar plant or a wind facility, it's tough. And the cost of capital is low and uh, the returns are not that high. Um, fortunate for us, we can um, build them ourselves and we have the capabilities to do it and therefore our returns are, are pretty good uh, in that. Um, but I, I would just, I just think that uh, investors um, need to find good partners who know what they're doing and um, put money to work with them. Uh, of course, um, there are many out there, um, but I'd pick the best that know, that have the operating skills to be able to put this money to work, and that's really important. And, and, and the interest is large. We just raised um, a $15 billion uh, fund for transition investing, uh, and, um, and there's 250 investors that came in in six months. I think it's a, the, the, the shortest time we've ever raised a large fund uh, in our history. And, uh, and it's a newer strategy as well. So it, um, it just shows, it indicates the, uh, the desire for institutional investors and others to um, put money to work in, uh, in the transition in net zero.